you and welcome also from our side and thanks for joining the presentation. We have a very interactive session today. So I guess we have a couple of you guys in. Feel free to, to have a discussion with us. I guess we will go through through the presentation and the slides. And as we just four or five of us just raise the hand, ask and, and let's have kind of an interactive discussion um, on it. We are here today uh, to talk about um, how to resolve the logistics sustainability challenge. And this is a topic that we see a lot at the moment where a lot of customers do not really know what to do and how to handle it. And we see it directly when, when we now look at, at, at the current political situation, fossil prices going up, Ukraine crisis. So people really think about how can we reduce our carbon footprint? How can we measure it? How can we be more efficient? And this will be really a topic that is coming more and more. And today in, in the presentation, um, we, will, um, we will first do a short introduction. So we will quickly introduce ourselves. We'll explain you a bit what is the motivation? Why should you do it? Some things that, uh, that, that we build up there. How can I measure? This is mainly also to be a task that we go in. How can I operationalize and plan and do things? So we also brought a framework there with us. And in the end, what's the conclusion? What do we learn out of uh, out of that? My name is Robert Recknagel. I guess we we know each other already. Um, so so I will keep it short. I'm working for Flexis. I'm responsible for the manufacturing and logistics area. I do have experience with with OTM integrations already from from previous uh, projects, also with with Oracle. And mainly our core company target is really planning and optimization of complex challenges uh, in the transportation chain. Yeah, my name is Tobias Hessler. I'm managing director of Big Mile Germany. Um, I have uh, uh, over 15 years experience in logistics software, optimization software, APS tools um, in, in different uh, projects. And uh, since 2021, I'm uh, responsible for the Big Mile Germany. And Big Mile is a SaaS company, a Netherlands founded uh, SaaS company for yeah, carbon footprinting and transport logistics. So we, our mission and vision is to 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 enable the, the whole supply chain uh, related to trans uh, related to transport to make the carbon footprint visible and to calculate it in a reliable way and to allocate the emissions back to back to the shipment level in the end. So our operating is a, is a SaaS platform where you can put all your data in and uh, have a deep insights in your carbon emissions uh, along the supply chain. And the second product, and this is uh, something which brought us together and, and uh, we made the decision to join forces to make it more sustainable, is a REST API where we have our know-how, our methodology as a lean REST API, which you also can easily integrate in OTM projects, for example, to calculate in different use cases. And uh, this is one unique thing we, we want to present today, how it works together. So I will explain a bit the why, and Robert will explain the how, how to act and how to optimize. So let's let's look at this circle. This uh, carbon management is, is it's, it's not just a task you have in your company. If you are a supply chain manager, you have to look at all aspects. And this is what, what our relationship makes strong, <coughs> because the yellow ones, uh, the understanding why do we do some carbon analytics and carbon management, how to measure and how to report in a good way. This is our task, and how to bring this in action and to optimize to reduce your carbon footprint. This is a task of, of, of uh, Flexis to bring that together. And if you have to, 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 to optimize and reduce your footprint, you have to begin again to, to, to measure it, to, to, to uh, find out how, how big is the impact of your, your actions you take. So the first thing is to understand. So if you imagine you're a supply chain manager, you have a lot of questions. Yeah, you have a lot of questions you can, can ask yourself. So in the last five or ten years it was more a bit of marketing but now the topic is arriving in, in the supply chain for the logistics manager and uh, there are a lot of questions how can i make my my carbon footprint better how can i mix my fleet with alternative um, energies like lng or electric vehicle um, and these are all questions uh, which i'm asked from my, my supervisor from my board and, and uh, i have to handle that as a supply chain manager and therefore i need tools and knowledge so if we go one step further, as I said, it's not just the marketing issue. I want to be greener. Um, everybody in, in, in the supply chain and also in the industry is sure that this 
the topic of carbon management will be the future topic and one of the top topics in the next 10 years. So everybody is aligned to reduce the carbon footprint and to come to a net zero environment. And uh, therefore you have to, 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 uh, to make it visible and to optimize it. So the pressure is not only um, um, the, the, the um, yeah, logistic drivers or industry, as you can see, it's, it's the employees, it's the government. Uh, you have a lot of regulations which are upcoming in the next years. And also the thing of costs, also carbon footprinting and carbon emissions will have a very, very strong impact and increasing impact in the cost situation of supply chain planning. So this is to, to understand why we do that. So everybody has to do it. Everybody has to do to reduce the carbon footprint and everybody has to, to be net zero to, to be yeah, sustainable <laughs> in this market. And the main challenge is that we have increasing volumes in the supply chain. So the volumes, uh, the volume streams will triple in the next uh, few years. And the challenge is you have to be, uh, become net zero in this time. So you have to do something. So the first step is to, to look into and then to act. So the next thing, after you have un un understood why to do so, you have to, to, to find a way to measure it. And uh, it's, it's a complex thing. So if you look into um, the greenhouse gas emissions, the, the, there are three scopes you have to report, you have to measure. The easiest way is your scope one. These are the direct emissions you produce by your own vehicles, by your own um, uh, buildings. And, and this is uh, what you can have very good under control. But everything what is indirect uh, scope th uh, two and three is very difficult, uh, especially in supply chain, because you have a lot of subcontractors, you have a lot of uh, subcontractors with warehouses and a lot of participants uh, in this whole supply chain. And uh, you're not the owner of this, uh, all these assets. So you have to make it transparent and you have to, to bring it uh, in, a, in a good way, um, especially for, for the transportation related thing. And this, this is where we are strong as Big Mile to make these complex things easy and consumable. So Big Mile will taking care of all these calculation frameworks. There are a lot of frameworks. It's not the global standard we are hoping for it. So uh, the upcoming ISO norm in, in the end of the year will help to make it a bit more easy. But our, our issue is to, to bring all these frameworks, how to calculate it in our platform and our calculation. So you have the GLEC framework from, from Smart Freight Center in Amsterdam. You have um, a smart way in US. You have uh, emission factors NL. For Netherlands, you have in UK other frameworks and the most common standard in Europe is the GLEC framework of the Smart Freight Center. And the um, international standard will be the um, ISO norm, which is upcoming um, in the end of the year. So we support all these frameworks. There's a lot of work to, to take care of that. If you print out the GLEC framework, for example, it's 200 sides of, of printing and factors and all the kind of things. But you have to, to report in a reliable way based on such frameworks. Technology is the second thing. We are a cloud-based platform. You have to take care of sensible data, of data handling, and all the kind of things. Also to develop a, a good REST API. And also this uh, ESAE uh, certification makes sure that your accountants, uh, who is responsible for CO2 reporting in the end of the year, is, has not to take care on the methodology, uh, just on the input data. So you can easily do it with, with Big Mile. We had a lot of experienced people and, and also with a sustainable mindset in our company. A lot of know-how, we are close to the standard regulations to, to come in in, in the next uh, frameworks. And uh, we bring a lot of value and we want to be the, the industry standard of uh, CO2 carbon emission calculation allocation in, in an easy way. So it's, it's a standard product, it's not a big project, it's a Lean REST API or a standard uh, platform product. And it's certified, it's uh, covering all transport modalities, not just road transportation, all modalities. and. Um, yeah, and we also have a collaborative approach because sustainability is nothing you can do by your own. You need your network. You have to involve all your participants uh, of the supply chain. And in our platform, we can bring it together. So that is the main yeah, core value of BigMy to make these complex things easy to cover all these topics in one solution and one API, which you can easily integrate. So data, data drives the value. Data is a big topic in this environment. You have to be, uh, you have to have good data to come to sharp carbon footprint. But you can also start with uh, with data like transport shipment data. You need a location A, location B. You have to know which modality it is and uh, 
Yeah, then you have to know um, the weight or the unit. Then you can start <coughs> to, to calculate with uh, such kind of bronx data in our uh, terminology uh, to, to have a certified carbon footprint. And um, <coughs> then you can increase this data with consumption-based data. So if, if you know how many um, fuel is consumed or energy is consumed in your supply chain, the, the carbon footprint is becoming sharper, sharper, and sharper. And if you have, for example, in a consumption-based methodology, the uh, knowledge of the consumption per trip, for example, this is the sharpest way to calculate. But the message is data quality is a factor. And if you have good data, the value is increasing, but it's not a reason to wait. So you can start with simple data and you can increase data quality step by step. And it's also important to involve all the partners, the internal and external partners, to come to this data. And fuel consumption data, primary data out of telematics, this um, is, is not easy to get, but uh, you can start with a with the core data and increase step by step. Is that the Gold Plus standard if you get data from your onboard uh, yeah. diagnostics? Yeah. For if, if you have um, consumption information per trip, it's the best data you can have. Okay, so you can get it from the telematics or from the, from the onboard? Uh, right, from the onboard system. units. Yeah. yeah. And if you know the consumption for your complete fleet in an average of a year, then you have also a kind of silver data. You have consumption data, but in a very rough way. And if you have also data per vehicle type for your trucks, for your vessels and all the kind of things, then you're on the gold uh, area. Gold plus is the premium data set, but then you need uh, really good consumption information about your vehicles per trip in the yeah. best case. And is it, sorry to ask, or is yeah. it only CO2 that you are calculating? Uh, it is CO2E, the equivalence of CO2, the greenhouse gases, which are important. And we calculate uh, these uh, CO2E emissions, but we can also um, uh, calculate all the other uh, emissions. Um, we, we can also easily integrate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also important to know that uh, also the, 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 the number you get, uh, there are also two results you get from us. It's the one thing is uh, well to wheel, including the energy and the uh, 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 tank to wheel. So this is what you consume on the way. These are different results, and in the annual reports, you have to report well to wheel. So this is important. So this is a rough overview of our management dashboard in our BI tool, um, which shows all KPIs, which is um, important to have the total kilogram uh, of CO2 per ton. And this is the most important per ton kilometer. This makes it comparable with each other to, 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 to have an, an a KPI over the whole supply chain. As you can see, we can have the different data qualities in, in, in one calculation and reporting as gold and silver data in this example and all modalities. And if you look here, we have 30% air freight in this example, but it makes 43% of CO2 emissions. So you can have a very fast overview and all the intelligence behind the calculation, the reliable calculation, the allocation. Um, this is what we're also offering as a REST API to bring this also in operational business. So what we do with our platform is make it transparent and visible. And uh, what Flexus is doing to use this information to make a proper optimization. All optimizing algorithms you know are based on distance and, and costs. And now we have a way to, to also bring in the sustainability aspect. Maybe it's a big question, but what is the, the E in the CO2E? CO2E uh, stands for CO2 equivalence. These are the other greenhouse gases. CO2 is, is just one of them, and the equivalence are the other um, CO2 equivalents uh, for from the greenhouse gas. Uh, yeah. Maybe just something for, for us as Flex is to, to start the partnership and to co combine the solution. The compelling fact was that, that they have the, the API. So, so we have a good and a quick in, uh, integration. And this was the major thing. You find a couple of guys on the market saying, okay, we're ready to do carbon measurement. But the approach to say, look, we start with a very slim um, approach at the beginning, like, um, like uh, silver, right? And then moving and monitoring the move towards gold and gold plus is appealing for us because we have a lot of customers saying, I need to get more sustainable, I need to measure, I need to optimize. 
but I have different qualities and I have no clue of how to get there. And, and the problem that we often see is then the customer are kind of saying, okay, I don't have good quality, so I rather don't do anything, right? And I think this is a good answer to the customer to say, start where you are, move from there slowly, prove that you do improve. And this is also a great success story to your customers in the market, like to say, look guys, yes, we are not perfect. The world is not perfect, right? But I can, I can report to you every year, not just how much my carbon reduces, but also how much better I am able to measure my carbon. But you get the, the broad view from the very beginning. We don't just start with a very small part because the value of just measuring a part of your supply chain, your transport chain, is pretty low. So you need the full picture from the very beginning. But how can I manage the kind of qualities? I think this is, this is really was for us the trigger to say, okay, this is a market approach that really convinces the customers in the end. Good. Ah, my one. Okay, excellent. So now the, <laughs> now the question is, now the question is, what <clears throat> the hell does carbon and carbon measurement have to do with optimization? And this is exactly um, again something that we see our customers in, like, and it, it's to be honest the same as with the visibility topics, right? Which we see since quite a while, right? Visibility as such is not a value. Carbon measurement as such is not a value. It is a value, but it's not a business value. This is not something I can work on, right? So where we are strong is, is to say, how can we operationalize? How can we manage? How can we change things based on the information that we have? Based on track and trace, other topic of the topic today, but something that is more common now, but in carbon, the same thing. Yeah, I can report it. I can tell it to my management. I can maybe write in some contracts with my subcontractor that they need to reduce by 10%. But that's not the topic. How can I work with it and improve? And this is something where we as Flexus come in with our solution. And basically, and you've seen me presenting and you know a bit what we do as Flexus already, but we now uh, are in the first implementations together with Big Mile of our solution to combine the information from carbon that we have with, with optimization. So exactly to be as what you said at the beginning to say, well, how can I introduce carbon as optimization parameter for decision making? And we as Flexus, we do complex vehicle routing and scheduling topics, continuous move, uh, depot-based planning, different heuristics, uh, uh, working with large fleets, working with cap business, working with, um, with retailers. When it comes to complex vehicle routing and scheduling, second part is when it comes to, to logistics network planning and optimization, we do huge outbound vehicle planning scenarios uh, we do 3PL scenarios in network planning. So this is kind of the core business where we come from, right? But the next step for us is really how can I how can I get how can I get this into the model? And you can see it here on the right side, right? We start introducing the topic of, of cost reliability with the customer and carbon into joint uh, target functions. And based on that, we found out that your whole model changes depending on the decisions that you take. If you, for example, say, okay, this is what you do today in, in OTM or wherever you are, you say, okay, produce it at best, best cost. That's it, because that's the parameter you have, right? But maybe that's not the answer of tomorrow. Maybe the answer of tomorrow is also not do the transport for best carbon values because that's gonna be very, very expensive and doesn't make any sense. So the truth is in the middle. And this in the middle is something that we make manageable, right? So you can decide as a customer, um, for example, I want to reduce my carbon footprint by 10% next year, right? So we can integrate a target function saying produce my logistics at best cost, considering 
the new target value for carbon, right? Or another question which comes up pretty much at the moment is, is the topic of carbon cost and carbon uh, or monetarization of carbon, where we see in the industry coming up there, there's gonna be a price for carbon. One ton costs 90 euro, 900, whatever. So I as a company am the best one when I'm able to enter that in my target function to say, if you are able to reduce a ton of uh, carbon for less than 90 euro, please do it, right? And if, if it's more than 90 euro, don't do it because I need to pay the penalty anyways, right? And today it's not manageable. Today I purely need to pay when it comes. And this helps me taking, taking the right decision here and we do that with our Baker uh, routing and, and, and scheduling engine. And I show you later on a small use case that we made in, in that area already. Uh, so it, it's proven and proven value to, to be able to introduce that. And the second part is in the logistics network planning. And in the end, it, it's about the same topic, right? It's not planning the routes of the vehicle, planning the vehicle types here. It's rather also what kind of modality am I using? What are my lead times? In the logistics network planning, we believe that also a lot of uh, impact in that optimization can be done also with playing with lead times and customer satisfaction figures. So it's not just cost against carbon, but it's also cost against carbon and service level that needs to be considered in the system. Like, okay, tell me, if I want to reduce my, my, my footprint by 10%, right? Um, how, how do the, the, the uh, expectations or the promise, the, the capable to promise to my customer change? Am I still able to keep it? Or does that mean that Spain will take a day longer, for example, right? Because there's no other way in my network to achieve that, right? And the interesting part also about the model is um, that it's it's not a fixed model, it's a living model. Meaning, if we get better data from big uh, from big data uh, from big mile, big big data from big mile. Uh, if we get better data from from big mile, right, the model changes. If the vehicle times, if the emission classes change, the decisions change. If the value of, of penalties change, change. If my corporate target change, because that's the question, right? Someone comes up saying, especially also in consumer goods, right? We put it in our annual report, 10% of the whole company. And then they go down to logistics manager and say, yeah, you also need to bring your share. Today it's like, okay, no clue. I can maybe do some greenwashing. I can maybe pay something to achieve that. But that can't be the, the solution of, of the future, right? So we believe that's really exciting, the topic, right? And, and this really is future-oriented. And this is something where we say, well, you know, you can connect um, Flexus and Big Mile to OTM to do that kind of simulations in a strategic, in a tactic way also an operational decision making to really make carbon and emissions manageable. So the question again to, to sum up what we talked about, why should you start? It's really not just cost. It's really not just, there's pressure from everywhere. Employees, customers, investors, society, government. It's gonna be a huge move in that area. Um, Measurement is a major topic where we found the right answer with, with you guys to say, move how you go, how you go on, start today. Great message in our opinion. And then the optimization, which I told, I showed you before, network planning, vehicle routing and scheduling, vehicle types, modalities, how can I make that all manageable? Um, and some, some use case that I brought with me today, and it's really short in here, but I, I thought it's important not just to run out without any of this surprise. So, someone told me that we need to have the surprise effect in the end, so, so I put it in here. Um, Florian is also with us, and then he's also later on in, in our booth. Uh, he's working my area. He did a master thesis together with us in, in sustainable logistics in Stuttgart. Uh, and he did an analysis on a logistics 
inbound network. So it was a large area forwarder network um, where we introduced our solutions um, in the sense of how um, it's, it's a pure fossil fleet. It is a mega, um, um, yeah, mega line of fleet, so typical automotive fleet that we took um, with a large area, I think with about 50, 70 uh, trucks or something in the daily use. And we asked the question, what is the emissions today with a fossil truck? And we got the answer there. Then we asked the next question, what would it mean if we would do everything with electric truck? Right, so 100% electric, what is the outcome? And it was interesting because he said, well, it's not even possible, right? Because we had two, three trucks or tours that could never have happened, right? Even if, uh, maybe that's important. We did not just take the tour plan as it was, but also our system considered all of the constraints of the electric trucks, right? Range, uh, range load restriction, things like that, right? And, and so, so the tours look different afterwards with electric trucks, but some of them were not possible and the cost effect was very high. So it was like, yeah, you would never do that, right? And then, and then we said, okay, what is the best mix in a, uh, in a mixed fleet? And this was interesting because we found out that I think about 10 or 20% of the vehicles, if I'm not mistaken, we found out they should be electric. And we found out that we could, by that, reduce the carbon footprint by 35% and additionally lower the cost by 1%. And that is kind of the surprise point I wanted to make today because due to all of the regulations in Germany, obviously all of the government fu uh, funding and money that you get for electric trucks today, so obviously it's, it's not a pure economic, but it's a politically driven decision, right? But we found out Dear customers, start moving today, start running mixed fleets, start thinking about does that fit to you? And not the question black and white, electric or fossil, but how can I run mixed fleets in future? And the good thing is that it's, it's, it's environmental valuable and it's economic um, value in the end. That the short trips for the electric truck doing, or the shorter trips, or the trips into city centers? Or sure. Areas? Shorter trips with more stops. That's what comes out in the end later on the system. But a planner today would say, I take my tours of today, I took the electric trucks, nah, sorry, it doesn't work, right? So you need a system. Uh, right. yeah, the outcomes of the tour are also different because you were planning with the constraints of electric The whole trip. tours look different. The whole tour plan was completely different considering the constraints of, of the electric trucks. Right, and and this was a nice learning where we said, okay, so you can work with the data you have today. Technology is ready to change things. You just need technology to make the thing work because manually you don't have the chance to to do anything there, right? And, and we are together here to say we believe that I mean for standard the TMS execution and these stuff, OTM is fine. You don't need anything else. But when it comes to that simulation, when it comes to manage carbon and sustainability, uh, we are here to, to talk and we are happy also let now to, to, to answer questions and, and we're also there at the booth and we can discuss a bit about the topic because we believe that it's, it's really exciting and it's going to be the topic for the next two, three, five years definitely to do things there. Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody has uh, his sustainability goals until 20... Uh, 30 and uh, in 2050 everybody has to be net zero so it's it's a challenge and uh, yeah start now